Are you ready? Class? Yes. All right. So we are going over the review for the final. And just to let you know right now beforehand, there are some questions on here that I'm just say are not a good question. So I'm going to put an X on it. I didn't make this review. Okay? It's not a very good... A couple of them are not good questions, but... It is good practice for everything that we're doing. And on the final exam, since I did not make the final exam, what I'm going to do is throw something at people that have their laptops out and not doing the work they're supposed to do. You're watching Netflix? Is that what you just said? No, single task. Right here. Just focus on the final here, please. All right. Put it away. All right, so... Again, on the final exam, I am going to not count the problems that are I don't that I don't feel are good questions because I didn't write that exam. So I'm only going to grade you on the questions that we have actually covered this semester. And there's some of these on here that ones that we did not cover, so that's why I'm going to address that now before we actually get too far into this. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, a computer system requires a user to have an access code that consists of three-digit number and is not allowed to start with zero and cannot repeat digits. How many codes are possible? Now, to do this one right here, I want to find this in my notes first. Where is this going to be at in my notes? Some point what? Huh? County principles. Let's find it. So what's the... Uh, What's the thing? So we're trying to find it in the notes. 6.1? Okay, 6.1. All right. So. We did this before, but we did it with, with spaces. So I'm going to go with spaces. How many spaces do I have to fill in here? I have a three-digit code. One, two, three. And my first digit, it says it cannot do what? No, no, no. So first dash, how many digits do I have in the first dash? I heard it? Nine. Second dash? No. On the first dash, I can't use what? I can't use zero. But can I use zero on the next dash? Yes. So ten. Zero. Nine again. It's nine again, because it for my first number, for the first number, I could use, I cannot use zero, so it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the second part right here says it cannot repeat. So whatever digit I use for my first, I can't use it again. So that's why it started with nine, but then I also added a zero into my second number, right? And the third one's going to be? Eight. Eight. So multiply those out.
All right, next one. License plates are designed so that there are three letters followed by four digits. How many different license plates are possible? So, three letters, four digits. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Three letters. How many letters are there? 26. 26. Very good. There's 26. Can I repeat those? Yes. yes. So it's going to be 26, 26, and 26. What about the digits? Is there how many? 10. There's 10 digits. 0 through 9 is 10. So can I repeat those? Yes. So it's 10, 10, 10, and 10. Imagine if I wanted to put nine 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 nine. I can't. Yes, you can. It's gonna give the same result. No, no, no. Are you are you saying you want your license to plate to be nine 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 nine? Yeah. Your license plate, fine. It could. That's allowed. But we're looking at how many possible different combinations there are. All right. What do we get? D. Now, actually plugging this into the calculator is probably one of the best things you should be doing right now. Because a lot of y'all don't know how to do that. And then are going to ask me at the last minute how to plug it into the calculator. And guess what? I'm going to say, no soup for you. No soup. No. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Student council has 20 members, has following officers, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. All, mem all members of the council are eligible for all offices. No member can hold more than one office. How many different <laughs> slates of officers are possible? Okay, there's different, right? Yeah. But does order matter? No. If you're picked for president, is that different than vice president? Yes. Oh, yes. It does matter. So order does matter, right? Yeah. So if order does matter, what can I say this is? Order does matter. What are those that order does matter? Find it in your notes because you need to actually know where this is in the notes. Very good, yes. So, so if order matters, this is permutation. So if it's permutation, so it would be N, P, R. Dang, fries are done. How many, how many you have? We have 20, right? 20. And we're selecting? Four. Four. And that's it? So let's go ahead, menu. What are we doing here? Finance. Finance? Uh, ability. Ability. Is it a permutation or a combination? Yep, because in your notes, you say order does matter, so it is a permutation. So I'm going to put 20, comma, 4. Make sense? All right, five is a dumb question. Wait, hold on. No, wait, it's not five, it is... 
What, did I skip one? Oh, yeah, that's the one that I was going to skip. Hola, como esta usted? Esta muy bien? All right, so back to test. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. This one right here, number four, that was the one I was actually supposed to skip. Okay. So that's why I just, I don't know why it did come up. So let's go back to five now. Okay. A club with 30 members is choose is to choose a group of six members to represent at a convention. How many different ways choose group of six people? Now, does order matter? No. Order does not matter, so that makes this a what? Why does it matter? Okay, so if I'm going to select three people out of this class to go get candy. No, like actually like, you know, the store, candy store, okay? If I choose you first or third, does it matter? No. It's not going to matter because guess what? You're going. Everyone's going to go get candy, right? All that you're you're happy be like, yeah, candy. Okay, so that's the reason why order doesn't matter. In this one, if you're not if you're chosen first or last, you still get to go. So this is if order doesn't matter, that makes this a combination. So I'm going to put in. C, R, what are my numbers? 30 and 6. Very good, 30 comma 6. You get 180? You, you guys get 180? No. No, I got um, C. So listen to them speaking, that's why I'm chosen. Or you could... Put it in the calculator that's in front of you. Is the calculator in front of you? No, that's my phone. Ah. Donde esta tu calculadora? Tu no es tonto. Tu es muy inteligente. 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 So, you're smart enough to do it. Just do it, okay? I know, but... Just do it. I'm lazy. I know, but I don't want you to be lazy. I want you to do well on this. Because, again, I don't want to see you here next year because I care about you that much. I'm not going to be here next year. I care about you enough that be like, damn it, get the hell out. Six. Actually, what did we say the answer was? C. C? Okay. All right, so then Brian's over there playing, you know... Tetris on his phone. It's kind of hard if you really don't have the buttons. If you do the touch screen, it, yeah, it doesn't work right. Yeah, it doesn't. All right. Signal can be formed by running different colored flags of the pole. How many uh, distinct signals can be made with six flags? Three of them are blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this one's dumb. So guess what? This is one of the dumb ones. Yeah, dur during during first hour, we are actually evaluating the questions. We're like, man, where do we find that one? Oh, yeah, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that one. That one's a dumb question. Don't worry about it. It's a dumb question. Yes, two dice are rolled. How many ways can the outcome be 7 or 11? How many ways? It's not talking about probability. Let's just count the ways. I got two dice, right? Okay, so to get seven, it would be what? Four and three. Uh, five and two, right? What's the next one? Six and one. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two and five. One and six, ah. and what about to get 11? Six and five. Six and five, or, so those are the only possible ways, right? Yes. And how many ways are there? Ocho, there's ocho number of ways. Ocho, it's just counting the number. So by listing out the number is probably the easiest way of doing this. Does that make sense, right? 
Okay. What? No! Hit pause. What is pause? The fourth one. What is that? Two and five? Listen, I don't make fun of your penmanship, do I? I probably should, shouldn't I? I know. All right, if you draw one card from a standard deck of cards, how many ways can the card be a seven or a red card? So first, how many sevens are there in a card in a deck? There's four sevens, and how many are red? Where do you find this in your notebook? 26. 26 of them are red. Yes, you're saying the right answer, but everyone else is just looking at you, waiting for you to say the answer. I'm going to put you up here when you take the test so no one can actually look at your test. Because I want everyone else looking in their notes. This is in the notes. We wrote this down. It is in the past notes. What past notes? 7.4. Look at that, 7.4. 7.4. That's where we're finding this. Yeah, it's 26. Okay, so there's 26 red cards, right? There's 26 red cards. But, but, is my answer going to be 30? No. It's not. Why is it not? Because there's only because there's only four cards to choose from. Out. Nope. No. Nope. Is that already equal number? Is it just gonna be seven? Huh? Not thirteen. Seven. Not seven. Is it the one? <laughs> Four. Oh, wait, it's only five? No, it's two. 22 cards, and 26 and 4 is 30, so 22. No. And this is going to be of uh, hearts. What's the other one? Diamonds. Diamonds. These are still red, right? Yes. Oh, the jack is also count. That's only the They do count. Because they're red. And let's take a look at spades. So we only have seven there. And then what was the other one? Clubs. And a seven. So I listed the cards here, right? So how many red ones do we have? There's 26 red. Right, 26 red, and how many sevens? There's four sevens, right? Oh, in general, yes. There's four sevens in general. Is it minus or 24? It's no, it's not minus 24. Not 22. Eight. Am I close? Okay, we have 26 red, right? Yeah. And how many sevens do we have? Four. So together, how many 30. choices do we have? 30. No. Uh, it's not 30. 28. Why is it 28? Because you're adding the two other, two other sevens. Oh, no, 
know but where didn't I already count these the, two here? The little, whatever those things are called inside, right? No. Well, at least I got the answer. It is 28. <laughs> it is 28. Okay, this is why. This is why. There is four of the sevens. There's 26 of the red. What do they have in common? There's two sevens in common. Because set these two sevens are in both category, aren't they? And that's what we're trying to look at here. So how many different options do we have? I just can't count this twice. I can't count those sevens twice in this category. Does that make sense or nonsense? Yeah, so the four represents the, the decks, right? Four represents how many sevens we have. Oh, okay. We have four sevens, right? Four sevens. And then we have 26 red. So I added my four sevens, added my 26 red, and sub subtract what's in common, what is in both. So if you're looking at that same set of notes, don't we actually have that? We have, I believe it's A plus B minus A and B. It's the next set of notes there? Yeah. Yeah, so we're adding them, but we also have to subtract what they have in common. So that's why the answer here is 28. Why? Because we did do those questions and you forgot about them? Yeah. Okay. That's why we're doing this review. So. What is the probability of getting exactly one three in a roll of seven dice? So one three. So only one of them is going to be three. So I'm going to roll seven dice. I'm not going to get the three until the seventh one. So my first roll is going to be how many... Since I don't want three, I want anything else but three. Five. Out of? Six. Five out of six. So now we're talking about probability, so it's five out of six. So the next one, I'm also doing the same thing again, right? Because I don't want to get a three until my last. So not three would be five out of six, five out of six, five out of six, five out of six, five out of six. And my last one is going to be the three. Okay, on that dice, what is that choice? Three out of three. Not three. So one out of six. One out of six, because how many threes are there? There you go. So go ahead and multiply all those together. I know y'all are calculating this, putting things in the calculator, doing your multiplication, you got your numbers. People are just sitting there waiting for someone else to answer it for them. It's not a good thing to wait for someone else. Because you got to do it yourself. Anyone, take a stab. What do we get? A. A. Thank you, the. Everyone in class appreciates you. Because you, you are doing the math that no one wants to. They're just sitting there waiting for you. I know there's other people doing it too. But, hey, I, you know. I, I, hey, look at that. 
I'm just, I'm waiting for everyone, and I'm hoping everyone is trying to actually do this. What's the point of actually doing a review if you're not doing the review? You're just waiting to look at your phone to look at the stats on, you know, your your favorite or or. Does anyone? Huh? No. Yes, it is. Yeah, because it's like zero point. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Ty, what you doing? No, uh huh. Lies. Uh huh. Yeah. You over there taking selfies? Why? Why you gotta do that? Okay, seriously. Come on now. All right, a card is drawn at random from a standard deck of 52 cards. What's the probability that a card is not a five? All right, how many fives are there? Four. Four. So how many are not five? Well, we should risk it. So. Yeah. 52. Pick, pick, pick all five, right? I don't know. You're going to get me demonetized. Quit swearing, little girl. There's 48, right? Because in a deck of cards, there's 52. And I'm going to take away the four cards that are a five. Okay, so it's going to be 48 out of 52. And when you reduce your fraction, you put in your handy dandy calculator, hit enter, it's going to reduce your fraction. Do we have to do four times that? No. Just put that in. Hmm. Twelve over thirteen. Yep, I, yep, I. All right. Let's go number 11. All right, 11 is another one that's a hot mess, so guess what? No, nah, I'm not gonna do it. Because we didn't do any problems like this before. Any trees like that? Yeah, that was not part of our curriculum. Bam! Not these ones. Yeah, we did different stuff. So if you see it on the test, I'm still not going to count it. No. Okay. If, if you get it right, good for you. Good job. Okay. That's going to look good on the district tests because the district is looking at all this other stuff, even though they shouldn't have put it on the test. I'm not, like I said, I didn't write the test. I don't know what's exactly on the test, but if bad questions are on, on the test, I'm not going to count those against you. So I'm just going to say, let's say, if on the actual test, what number is this, 11? Yeah. If on the actual test, number 11 is a bad question, I'm just not going to count it, four against you. Even but on your district, on the district score, because you could log in afterwards, right, to see the, your score, you could see that, but that's not accurate because I'm not going to count all the questions. All right, so you can do it to make, your, to make the district score look okay. There we go. All right. Uh, here we are. Here's another one. This is actually, yeah, no. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like they do for, uh, what's that, chemistry? Anyone take chemistry? Okay, so so think of it like this. You have a 80%, no, you have a 50% 50, 50 solution, and then you're going to dilute that to 80, dilute it more, 80% of that 50% solution. No, that's actually what it says. So of that solution, what you currently have, you're going to dilute it more. So I'm going to, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. Okay. Do I have any soda? No, oh, okay. This iced tea was made from concentrate. So there is a 100% solution that this was diluted to. So they added water, right? But then it this is still kind of strong for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in a bigger cup and add more water so it's gonna dilute it more. Oh, so you're basically like watering it down. Yeah, and that's what this is asking for. So what percentage is left after after you're done? I don't think 
Don't worry about it. No, like I said, don't worry about it. I'm saying that's what these problems are. But, yeah, the analysis of that, yeah. So, I don't know. Do you want to try and do it? No. Okay, good. <laughs> a bag contains three red marbles, six green marbles. One marble is drawn at random and not replaced. The second marble is drawn. What's the probability that the first marble is green and the second one is red? Ooh. So, first marble is green. How many green do we have? Three. Out of? No, green is six. Like, wait a minute, that didn't sound right. Okay, green is six. Six out of nine, right? And my next one. It's seven. No, it's five. Second one is. Red. How many red do we have? Three. Out of? Eight. eight. Why eight? Because one is not replaced. Not replaced, so you're not going to put it back. So go ahead and multiply those. How do I get what? Yes. So we got B there. All right, so right here. This is a first semester question. Standard deviation. It's a first semester question, so don't worry about it. If there is first semester questions on there, it's fine. Okay, do your best on those. But again, I'm only counting what you did this semester. Okay, so if you look at your notes, you look at a notebook, look at the topics that we covered, I'm only going to covering those objectives. And that's what's only going to, I'm going to count on the test. If there is first semester questions on there. Is it like multiple questions? Think it, think about it. Okay. So 15, two dice are rolled. What's the probability of the sum rolling seven or more? Two dice are rolled. <clears throat> so how many are seven or more? Okay, so to be seven or more, okay, all the combinations that I can get in between these two would be six, one, right? Yeah. Okay, what about six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six, six? Okay, what about the next group? No. Okay. So the next group I also have to include 
So with the different combinations, because I have one red dice and one orange dice. So now I could actually go the other way if I said that it was going to be six, one, right? Six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, and six, six. So this one right here is a pain. So the probability that I have for the different combinations, it, it's there's a lot. So it's going to actually be this one right here. So you don't even have to like. It, it is going to be a lot. This is a multiple choice that I'm telling you. It could have been 5 over 6 because that is, that would have been 25 over 36. Because if you think about all the different combinations that you would have in between those two, with the two dice, there's 36 different combinations. And of those, of those different combinations, you know, there was 23 that actually came out to be 7 or above. So that's why. All right, I know that one's kind of a pain, but you know, I hate those dice problems. A certain school, the probability of being male is 60%. The probability of red hair is 10%. What's the probability of being a female with red hair? Okay. Female with red hair. First, what's the probability of being female? 40. 40. So it's going to be 40 percent right so 0.4 or 40 over 100 right times because this is going to be red hair so this is going to be an and on this one what's the probability of having red hair now 10 percent because there's only 10 percent are gingers so 0.1 so what we did do this before we said 40 over 100 you remember it from the notes and this was 10 over 100 and when we do that it gives me approximately something over 100 which gives me 4 over 100 right so 4 over 100 is one is 4% makes sense or nonsense kind of hopefully Maybe, possibly, on occasion. A card is randomly selected as standard deck of cards. What's the probability that a card is a face card or a spade? How many face cards are there? Three, two, no, jacks, queen, queen. Yep, that's it. Ace is not a face card because the ace does not have a face. So it's going to be three, right? Three for every suit. So there's going to be 12 out of 12. And or a spade. So how many spades are there? Only one. How many spades are there? What is a spade? Spade. Thirteen, right? Okay. And this is going to be... Do they have anything in common? Uh, the three face cards. Yes, we have how many face cards? Twelve. Twelve. Because there's three that are here, right? Yeah. Three spades, that's going to count on here. So it's minus 52. Three out of 52. So what's that going to be like? 25 minus 3, 22, uh, right here, 42? 
Now, for these right here, what do you think you should add to your notes? Especially for these problems. You think this would be helpful? Yeah. No, maybe? Okay, so face cards would be just Jack, Queen, King, right? And so on that last problem, how do we do the last problem again? It was face cards. It was face cards. How many face cards do we have here? Let's count them up. One. One, two, three, because those are the only ones that have a picture of a face. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right? Now, since this is going to be one of another one of those uh, or statements, so let's look. What's the next one? It's asking for was it spade? So also include spades, right? Yes. Okay, so including spades. So watch, here we go. Include all the spades. But didn't I already underline some of these spades? Yes. I already underlined these three spades. So I count how many are now underlined, which gives me... Twenty two. Twenty two. Okay. So if there's underlined currently twenty two out of how much? And when I did my approximate, it's point four. Was it four eight? Four two. Four two. Four two. Sorry. Is that an easier way to do these problems? So what would be beneficial for you, especially on this test? Write down your set of cards. A lot of people don't even remember that there's 52 cards in a deck. They don't know how many cards are red. It's not a good thing. And I know you guys are super tired and trying not to fall asleep, but you know I'm up here standing, and you guys are just sitting there, so I'm doing all the work, and you know you're drooling on your desk, Aiden. No drooling, seriously. Are you guys okay now? Is that a little bit better, or should I pause it, go stretch? Actually, you know what? Let's do that. <clears throat> All right, let's try this again. Class. Yes. Okay, so hopefully you guys had enough time to go look at your Instagram feed or whatever it is that you stare at your phone for countless hours on end. <clears throat> let's go ahead and finish this now. What number are we on? 18. All right, so this one right here is kind of a pain. So this is an and statement, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So in a class of 20 seniors, 17 have applied to university, 11 have applied to community college. Assuming all seniors have applied to a university or college, what's the probability that a class, number, uh, class member chosen at random applied to both? So I'm gonna do this.
So there is 11 that did community college, right? Okay, so this is, I don't know, what, what, what are you going to say, PC, Phoenix College? And, and, and if you apply to McDonald's University. That's actually a school. It really is. Now, this says that there is how many total? 20. 20 total, right? So it doesn't say what we have overlapping, so we got to figure that out. So from that, I know that everyone did apply. So right here is supposed to be community college is going to be 11, and this one is 17. But now there is overlap, so I got to figure out how this works. So how many did both? <laughs> So what I'm going to do is, from here, there is total 20, right? So it's going to look like this. So I'm going to have 8 here in the middle. 3 are going to do, of this, for community college. Because these have to add up to 11, right? Yes? And then this another one. So this is not 17, so if it's 8 that's going to be in both, this would be 11 here. 11 plus 8 is, oh wait, cross, ah, suck at math. 11 plus, no, this is, I said add up to 17. 9. 9, thank you. I can't math, I'm sorry. So we had to try to figure out what is both. How many is in both by trying to calculate and look at those numbers since they have to have overlap here and they have to add up to 20 total so some had to do both right some had to do both so we ended up getting eight is going to do both nine is going to be a university only three is going to be only the uh community college feet yeah so it's asking for what was the question Probability for what? So that's going to be both, which is going to be how many students? Eight out of? Which is going to give me what percent? Yes, it is 40%. This is a complicated question. That's the reason why I'm actually writing, breaking it down like this for you. So it wasn't worded very good, so that's the reason why I'm giving you these numbers. Does that make sense? Because most people are going to say where those came from. I'm giving these to you because I went and did the math off the side. So we said 40% letra A. So let's take a look at these next ones. It said events A and B have the probabilities listed below. Ooh, A or B. Hmm. Or statement. Find where or statement is in my notes. P of A or B. P of A or B. 7.2. She says 7.2. You guys agree? So to do an or statement like this, so what do I do with or statements? What does it say for or statements? What do you do with those? Add them. Very good. Add them. So my probability here is going to be 0.4 plus 0.3. Anything else I need? Or statement 
should be that Oh, there it is right there. And we did something right here. All right, so what am I going to do with the A and B? What do, what do I do with the answer that is they're both in common? Yep, subtract it. So my answer comes out to be 0.5. It's the probability of A plus the probability of B minus my both, A and B. Does that make sense or nonsense? It should be in the notes there. Do you see it or no? Hopefully, yeah. Okay. I know we actually had a homework assignment just like that. All right, so question 20 here. Where do you think we're going to do these ones at? In the calculator. What on the calculator? Finance. Okay, so let's go through and figure out everything. So I'm going to set this up so it's going to be N. What's my N here? Uh, payments, the monthly payments. Okay, how many am I going to have there? Why 60? Very good, very good. Five times 12, right? There's 12 minutes every year, so there's going to be five times 12 is 60. And the next one's going to be interest, which is PV. There we go. Negative. <coughs> Negative eight six five zero. Next thing is going to be after that. Payment. Do I know what the payment is? No. 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 I will need to get that though. So after payment is future value. Because I want it to be paid off. Twelve twelve n. So let's go and try and figure out what the payment's going to be. I'm hoping you guys are actually plugging this in to the calculator. Es muy necesito. Muy, muy necesito. Es grande necesito. Es vente necesito. That's how big it is. The payment's going to be what? 161. 161. There we go. Okay. So now I have that, but that is that my answer? No. no. What did it ask for? How much interest. Interest. Pay in total. So what is that? Tip. Tip. Total interest paid. To get the tip, It is tap minus PV. In this case, it is tap minus PV. Because this one's looking for that. I had to fit, figure out what the payment is. Yep, to get the tap, it's payment times what? N. N, payment times N. So on your calculator to scratch pad, you do payment times N. So payment times n, which is going to give you a big number. And then to get the tap, I'm sorry, the tip, I need to subtract PV. Yep, 
Yeah, tap is nine something. And then my tip comes out to be? 1025.6. Because that is my, wow, that is horrible there. Your face. How dare you throw that down? And that girl that worked on that notebook, how dare you insult her? The disrespect. I know, right? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Who's got the pass anyway? Oh, it's actually down there. Just grab the broom. It's probably easier. Does that make sense or is that nonsense still? All right, so let's go with the next one. This one right here. This one sucks. I don't like this question. I don't. Because you have to figure out what the what the tap is divided by the months to get the payment to figure out the interest rate. So it's it's lame. So how about this? Yeah, we didn't do any problems like this. It was like super weird. Anyway. All right. 22 compound interest for AYP. How do I do AYP? Where do I find that in tu notas? Eight 8.2? All right, go find 8.2. I will tell you right now, it is the back page of 8.2. AYP is the bottom of the back page. There it is right there. Don't flip it. Put it back. That's it right there. Put your hand down. Put your hand down. Put, your put it on the paper. Wrong paper. Yes, that one. Right there. Yes, there it is right there. AYP is right there. Does that say AYP? Does it tell you how to calculate AYP right there? Yes, it does show you how to calculate AYP. Uh, you really need to go play with this notebook just so you can try and get used to where this is. I know this isn't your notebook, okay? So, so you gotta figure out where these things are. AYP. All right. To figure out AYP, how do I do that? You have to take one and then parentheses and then one plus HR. Yeah. Which is? Over. Print close. There we go. And when we plug it in the calculator, uh, one point, no, that's wrong. That's why is it? Because you have to subtract the one. Subtract one, and then do what? Divide. Multiply it by a hundred. It's almost like it's right there in the notes.
It's almost like it's right there in the notes. Skip up to 25. Spanning tree. Where is spanning tree? In the way beginning. In the way beginning. <laughs> These are the trees we did. So we find that and find out what the spanning tree is. What is a definition of a spanning tree? 5.1. What's the definition say? A connected one is every branch is reachable from any other branch. An undirected is every branch of Right? Yeah. So can I reach every vertex from every other vertex? No. On which one? And the A. A, B, C, E. Okay, that one I, I can reach it. Can I reach it? Can I reach everything on HFG? No. I can't reach on HFG. So let's take a look at what we have for the options. It says, no, the number of vertices is an odd number. Mm. No, vertex G, the odd degree. Mm. By removing edge FHD, F H D Okay, oh, yes by removing edge C D. In a row, okay. So it just brings it from here. Okay. So can I reach it from everything? No. Because are they all connected? Can I reach E from H? No. no. So are they all connected? No. no, they're not. So it is not, and it says G has an odd degree. That doesn't work for an answer, but no number of vertices is an odd number. So it would be that one for this answer. Because if you notice, H also has odd degree. So that doesn't work. And C also has an odd degree, doesn't it? Yes. So that's the reason why I'm eliminating that as one of my choices. So we have A as the only one left. A subgraph is a spanning is a spanning tree. Which of these following is not a property of a spanning tree? Okay? A spanning tree will Will not a spanning tree will contain no circuits? Ooh, circuits. When we talk about circuits, same thing. Yeah. What's it say about circuits? What's it say about circuits? No, I'm asking you, what's a circuit? And what's it say about circuits? Okay, yep. But what's it say? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Spanning tree of a graph is connected. Subgraph, that includes all vertices of the original, but it contains no circuits. So a subgraph is a spanning tree is not a property of that. So that's true, no no circuits there. Spanning tree will be disconnected. Is that true? What's the word disconnected mean? Not connected. Okay, not connected. But a spanning tree right here says it has to be connected. So that's false. So this one right here, E, is gonna be false.
So, let's see. Let's look. If a spanning tree has 40 vertices, how many edges does it have? Is there an equation for there? How many? It's what? 39. It is 39. You see why it's 39? Because you have to do what? So subtract 1, right? So it has n vertices, n minus 1. So we did the math off to the side, which is said 4 minus 1 gave me three edges, didn't it? So it's almost like these notes are really good here. Almost. Which subgroup below is a spanning tree for the graph? B. Okay, so let's go through definitions again. Suppose you have a connected, undirected graph. Then a spanning tree of a graph is a connected subgraph that includes all the vertices of the original but contains no circuits. What is a circuit? When it goes around. Yeah, it goes around, right? So, A, is that a circuit? Yes. No. It contains a circuit. This is a circuit here, right? What about B? Yeah, yeah there's a bunch of circuits here. And let's look at the next one. What's wrong with C? It it's not connected. So right here, this is all by itself. Not connected. What about D? They're all connected, but they They're all connected here. And no circuits. So my answer is? D. Very good. The following graph shows the flight time in hours from Big Bear Airline headquartered in Denver, Colorado. Minimum spanning tree is shown as bold edges. What is the shortest time to get from Denver to Seattle based on the given spanning tree? Denver to Seattle. So Denver to Seattle. Denver to Las Vegas. To Seattle. So that's going to be how much? Four. Four. Okay, is there any shorter? No. <laughs> no. Said so, uh, using Cusco's algorithm, what is the minimum cost for the weighed graph below? Now, minimum cost means we're going to connect everything. Right? Says, I'm trying to find the minimum cost. Use Kukos algorithm to tell us add the edges of a graph in order of increasing cost but avoiding circuits. So let's go through. Uh, what's my smallest? Four. What's the next smallest? Eight. So I would do this eight here, and then this eight there. So going in order, I don't have to. I don't want to do that eight because if I do that eight there, what would it be? It'd be a circuit, right? Yeah. So add up those numbers. What'd you get? Uh, 16, 16 and 20, and 
12, 32? Yes. 12, yep, 32. So I don't know where the choices is for this one, but that's what we got. Is it all the way at the top? No. I think they get stuck. Yeah. Because right there is C, D. C, D, and there, there's an L up there. I guess that one's just going to take an L. See what I did there? All right, chromatic number. And this is probably going to be the last one we're going to do because yeah, it's about that time. So chromatic numbers. So let's go find it in the notes for chromatic numbers. So I'm going by the notes right here, by the notes, chromatic numbers, not on your phone, says assign color one to a vertex with the highest valence, okay? Highest valence. So it's probably going to be one of these down here, definitely not this one. So it's probably going to be one of these. So let's go ahead and do this. So what's the, what is the highest valence here? Which is how much? Six. Six. So I'm going to say that's six. How many is here on the outside? Three. 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 Right? Now I'm going to look at the same thing on the on the next one. Ah. What is the chromatic number on? I'm sorry, the valence on this next one? Five. Okay, it's going to be five. And then assign it. So this is three, 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 and three, right? So I start with the highest number and I give it a color. So I'm going to color in this one here. So what I did here, I'll give that one purple. And so everything that touches it cannot be purple. Cannot be purple, 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 right? So there's one color there. Now let's go down in the order. So I'm going to pick the next highest valence, which is a three. So that's a red. That cannot be red, and that cannot be red. But can I assign red somewhere else? Yes. I'm going to assign a red right here. So that means that cannot be red, that cannot be red. Can I put red anywhere else? Yes. Right over here. And so, so that's two colors so far. Is everything colored? No. Nope. I still have, this one's blue, blue, and blue. So what is my chromatic number on this one? And we're looking for one that has a four, right? So it's not this one. So I'm going to go down to the next one and do the same thing. So I'm going to start with the purple. So highest there. So not, 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 and. Okay, so the next color was red. So I'm going to choose red and see what I got. So next highest, red. So not red, not red. And let me see, red, not red, not red. So can I put red at either one of those? No. no. So I'm going to go to my next color, which would be blue. So there's a blue. This one's a blue. And this one right here means that, that one cannot, be blue. cannot be blue. So that means I need another color, don't I? Yes. So this one is now going to be black. So this one has a chromatic number of four. four. And this is the answer I was looking for. Which one had a chromatic number of four? So um, sorry I didn't go through the whole thing, but we did a lot of it. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification button. And some of y'all need to go print some stuff.